It's 11th of October 1990 and a small crowd is gathering at Haneda Airport in Tokyo, Japan. The flock of mostly young to middle-aged men scan the departures board for Chinese Airlines Flight 17 to Taiwan. Seeing the flight just about to depart, they rush to see the plane take off as it leaves behind the island nation of Japan and an out of control economic bubble that is due to catastrophically burst in the coming months. As the plane flies overhead, the crowd wave and some sob. They are saying goodbye to the Japanese pop star, Haga Yui, who they have just learned is on board this flight. Her fans who have followed her over the previous year were devastated when news broke of her quitting the world of music. So today may be their last ever chance to see her. But unbeknownst to the Doran fans, however, is that Haga Yui is not actually on board this flight to Taiwan. In fact, she's not even at Haneda Airport. And this is because Haga Yui had never even existed. Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. I've had a lot of new subscribers since last time, so welcome aboard everyone. That last action hero analysis really, really got pushed to the top of YouTube and it helped me gain a lot of new subscribers. So thank you so much for clicking that subscribe button when you watch that video. But to the task at hand, today's video is going to be looking at the Japanese pop idol, Haga Yui. Um, before we get into the video, I just wanna kind of apologize in advance for some of my really bad Japanese pronunciation and also some of my bad French pronunciation on that matter. So be warned, <laughs> it isn't great. And if you enjoy what you're seeing and you enjoy the video, do all that good stuff, you know what it is that you do. It's, uh, it all helps the channel grow, it helps engagement, so on and so forth. Enough of that, let's get into the video. It's 1989 and Japan is in the final throes of a 40 year economic boom. Cooperation between manufacturers, suppliers, distributors and banks, guaranteed lifetime employment and strong labor unions and a newfound trade alliance with the United States had allowed Japan to become the second largest economy in the world by the late 1980s. The presence of Japan and its technological prowess was everywhere in American cinema at the time. The economic threat of a Zaibatsu-esque conglomerate or a cultural takeover loomed in many movies of the day. In Tokyo, times were good and popular culture reflected this. The video game industry, led by hardware manufacturers Nintendo and Sega, were booming. Japanese animated films were receiving worldwide critical acclaim and City Pop, with its upbeat vocals and jazz-influenced MIDI melodies, was the feel-good soundtrack to the metropolis. And across the entertainment spectrum were idols. Generally speaking, idols are young individuals who perform either for solo or as a group and are primarily associated with music though they can regularly cross careers and genres, appearing as actors, dancers, variety show guests and models. The term idol originates from Sylvie Vatan's appearance in the 1964 French film Churches Les Idoles, whose character was widely seen as talented, youthful and beautiful, an archetype in which to copy. Selected as young teens by talent agencies and record labels, Idols go through a rigorous training system before debuting, where they can then go on to have lucrative careers that often lead to appearances in other forms of media, while other less successful idols quickly fade into relative obscurity and disappear from public after an early retirement. The 70s and early 80s had seen the golden age of the Japanese idol. Popular female idols of the 1980s included Seiko Masuda, Akina Nakamori, 
Kayako Kaizumi, Minako Honda, Shizuka Kudo, and the 16 member group on Yonko Club, among many, many others. Idols undertake an intense training regimen and in public are expected to adhere to a rigid set of rules in order to uphold the illusion of ultimate perfection. No drinking, no smoking, no political opinions, and definitely no romantic partners. Female idols are held to an even higher standard than their male counterparts, with extreme examples of being told not to eat in public, not to use public bathrooms, and to answer interview questions about their favorite food with feminine sounding answers such as strawberries and shortcake. These strict rules and an intense work schedule are widely seen as exploitative, putting an incredible amount of stress on many young women. These abhorrent labor conditions leave idols with very little personal or financial autonomy. By the mid to late 80s, the golden age of the idol was drawing to a close. Oversaturation and a waning interest in audition related TV shows at the time meant decline in sales and smaller attendance figures, with people having less disposable income due to the continuing stagnant economy, along with an emerging younger generation of fans who seemed less interested in the idol formula, a time that would come to be known as the idol winter period. In 1989, the idol landscape was looking for a new star, someone fresh to emerge from the monotony of copycats and clones, and a comedian slash DJ on the late night radio show All Night Nihon would go on to not exactly find, but instead create someone, a star, someone who could bring some warmth to the coming idol winter cold. When radio DJ Hikaru Ijuin asked his listeners to send in humorous suggestions for idol artist names, he came across one response suggesting the name Hugga Yui. As a single word, Hugga Yui literally translates to itchy teeth, but it is used within the context of frustration or impatience or something that is irritating. This was funny because by 1989, the idol scene had become stale, with some record labels churning out copy and paste doppelgangers in a bid to reap chart success. And when success wasn't achieved, the idols were quickly thrown on the scrap heap, a system that as a radio DJ, Hikaru Ijuin found extremely irritating. It was then upon hearing the humorous name Hugga Yui that Ijuin had an idea. Why not just create an idol of his own? If producers could make a real girl fake, then surely Ijuin could make a fake girl real. Throughout the weeks of November, the 1980s drawing to a close and a national economic downturn now being foreseen on the horizon, listeners of Hikaru Ijuin's All Night Nihon radio show would call in submitting ideas for Hakuyui's collective creation. A collaborative effort between presenter and listeners, she gained a full profile. She was an Aries born on April 15 in the city of Kobe near Osaka before moving to Tokyo. Her real name was Makiko Higuchi and she had an older sister and a younger brother. Her parents had run a family owned bakery called Higuchi Bakery in Kokobanji in the west of Tokyo. She had studied and graduated from the local high school where she had excelled at basketball. She had a cat named Chatara Chan she was discovered in quotation marks in 1989 at a Miss Ponytail contest, which she subsequently won, although no such contest with that name actually exists. You see, as much as she was a joke, a satirical pop star poking fun at the industry, she was also a massive F you to a cruel, sexist and domineering idol system that exploited so many young women and led to tragedies such as the passing of Yukiko Okada, a young and up-and-coming idol who had jumped from the top of the Sun Music Building in Shinjuku back in 1986. Her unfortunate death would spur a copycat phenomenon over the following years bearing the name 
Yukiko syndrome. Although Haka Yui was kaku no idol, which means fabricated or fictional idol, she was more than just a parody. She was a critique of a culture that had become obsessed with the unrealistic image of the perfect woman, an impossibly faultless veneer covering a slimy corporate agenda bent on exploiting young women with the improbable dream of becoming a star. The 90s had arrived and so had Haga Yui. Over the last two months, she had built up quite a small following on the All Night Nihon radio program, even though she had yet to release a single song and no one had even seen what she looked like. Her first ever appearance was set to take place during the first week of February, a handshake. Fans lined up to meet Haga Yui, only to discover that her entire body was hidden behind a large curtain with just her single arm and hand protruding for the said handshake. The following week, she appeared on Japanese TV for the first time, announcing her upcoming single, though again she was speaking from behind a curtain. This mysterious talking silhouette ignited curiosity and intrigue from the viewers. And just a few days after this, on February 11th, Haga Yui officially agreed to do a meet and greet with her fans face to face. This would be the first time anyone had seen her in the flesh. The day came and the fans were eager to see the face of the new rising idol. Haga Yui was there for the first time in the flesh, though her face was covered by a mask. With each fan she met and with each hand she shook, she would wear a different mask. Buzz was beginning to spread of an up and coming idol whose face had never been seen. In the run-up to her debut single, she would regularly appear sporting her competition-winning ponytail, with her eyes nearly completely covered, careful to avoid revealing her identity. This mystery only enticed fans further. Who was she? And why did she appear to look slightly different with every appearance? In reality, Hikaru Ijuin had organised several women, some actors, some models, some singers, to stand in for Haga Yui. Throughout her short lifespan, she was played by around 57 different women. She played her debut show live in Ginza and Tokyo on June 23rd, with her adoring fans rushing the stage during the final song. Though was this pandemonium all cleverly coordinated to further her fabricated lore? Maybe so. But as her popularity boomed, she released her first and only single on 1st of July 1990. Starlight Passport was a sweet and uncomplicated track, with the irony from her creation carried over into the music. Released on CBS Sony Records, the track was held by some real, real genuine talent. Written by Tamio Akuda, a member of the acclaimed rock band Unicorn, with music arrangement by Noritaka Ubukata and Yashiko Fukuda, the voice of Haga Yui would come from Shibazaki Yukari, who was part of the experimental synth-pop group Haniwa-chan. With her fandom growing, Starlight Passport managed to reach number 63 on the Oricon chart, completely selling out its first pressing of 50,000 copies. At live shows, her face would remain hidden and her voice on playback. A photo book called Liar followed on September 13th. When Haga Yui sat for an autograph session for the book, three separate women would sit at three separate tables. Fans would then stand in line before the one whom they thought to be the more real Haga Yui. An exhibition of her original artwork was scheduled for early November. Rumours behind the scenes were swirling that the actual paintings were done by several renowned artists. The tentative title of the exhibition was do Mysterious Idols Dream of Human-Faced Sheep? A play on the Philip K. Dick novel Do Androids Dream of Electric Sheep? You see, as much as the joke of idols being positioned in such a strict, pure and pure, almost android-like way was paying off for the creators, 
all of whom seem to play up to the comedic value of the project as seen here in this short VHS release by CBS Sony Records at the time. Hundreds of others were encountering Haga Yui in a very different light, unaware of a satirical standpoint. You see, in a world where information was a lot slower and harder to access, a lie could spread halfway around the world before the truth even had time to put its pants on. Fan mail was now flooding Hikaru Ijuin at the radio station. It seemed that the Haga Yui experiment had gone further than he or anyone else had expected, and a new set of fans were falling for an idol who just wasn't there. Early fans had understood and even played up to the fact that Hagayui wasn't real. For example, the fans standing in line at the autograph table for whom they thought was the more real Hagayui made clear the fact that fans are aware of and take pleasure in the fiction game. Though a subset of emerging fans truly believed she was a real idol, the perfect woman much like how she had been ironically presented, who was she they wondered? And why did she never show her face? She was in real danger of becoming the very thing she was parodying. Now we've looked at this phenomena before in a previous video that explored the 1993 movie Last Action Hero and its own parody of 80s and 90s Hollywood action films. Fearing the project was starting to get out of hand and that his creation Haga Yui was losing her satirical edge, Hikaru Ijuin decided to end the project early on October 1990. He wanted to avoid the toxic levels of fandom and obsession that had gripped fans of other acts and had had a profoundly negative effect on the idols. A side note here, the 1997 movie Perfect Blue, both beautifully and hauntingly, looks at the lengths some fans could go to when gripped by idol obsession. It is definitely worth checking out that film, I highly recommend it. A critique of a system can be even more subversive or powerful when the critical view is coming from within the system it seeks to comment on. If anyone has the agency to analyse and deconstruct structures of power, it should be those who have felt its wrath firsthand. Hikaru Ijuin took to the airwaves and announced that Haga Yui would be leaving Japan on the 11th of October 1990, going to Taiwan to study. Her fans, some of whom had only just discovered her, were devastated. And with that, she grabbed her Starlight passport and headed for Haneda Airport, leaving a country that was spiralling towards an uncertain future with an economic crisis just around the corner. With the departing of Haga Yui came the full brunt of the idle winter period, coinciding with Japan's asset bubble burst and subsequent economic collapse. By the early 1990s, the good times that had been had during the previous decade had abruptly come to an end, and an onset of decades of economic stagnation would begin. Throughout Japan's lost decade, traces of Haga Yui's influence can still be felt. Although she wasn't virtual by today's standards, her Kaku no Aiduru status predates many other fictitious idols who appeared in the 1990s. Kayako Date, who debuted in 1996, was a full CGI character, treated as if she was real by both her label and fans. She was directly influenced by Haga Yui for the Nihon Broadcasting System radio director Yoshitaka Hori, who had been involved with Hikaru Ijuin back in the All Night Nihon days. Vocaloid software, utilizing an electronically produced virtual voice, was the next iteration in the fictional idol space, with Hatsune Miku and Kakamin Rin being the most well known. The 48 person idol group AKB48 welcomed a virtual member back in 2011, 
Amy Aguchi was a digital composite of the six most popular members within the group. But this virtual variant seemed to be just as disposable as her real life counterparts. As by May 2013, Amy Aguchi's profile had already been deleted from the AKB website, never to be acknowledged again. Haga Yui's only single, Starlight Passport, was actually remade with different lyrics as Sanso di Ruru by Shofoku in 2010. Still as catchy now as it was back then. コンサートは中止となった。波乱のコンサートはこの後我々に潜在一遇のチャンスを与えてくれた。帰ろうとした我々と羽賀優衣とがなんと逃げるのらの出口で鉢合わせしたのだ。こんなチャンスは二度とない